Aria King, I believe, for Tom Penny on Briar. So I do believe this is the first time we're going to have the Channel Mount Heroic Briar on stream for the weekend. Yes. Now, I've spoken to both these players. They both feel that they've got a pretty good game plan for the matchup. So I think it'll be very, very interesting to see how it plays out. Obviously, Briar able to put together these huge turns with uh, the Channel Mount Heroic giving all your attacks plus three. Now, the Olden build, uh, now, from what I've seen, there's a little bit of mix and matching that can go on. So there's some strong going in options and things like Zalus Belting and Realms of the Ancients, if he wants to go a bit aggro. Matt's uh, version is certainly spicier than the, the other versions, but I mean, Tom did come through um, taking on uh, Kale in the last round, um, in the quarterfinals on Bravo. Um, which was a which was a huge match, but yeah, is he prepared for Oldham? We'll have to see, yes, because uh, in the last matchup, to give our viewers a bit of context, it uh, was uh, Tom Penny versus none other than Kale McCreeth, the Bravo Master, mm. and that game actually went down to the wire a little bit in the end. So it looked like Tom was in danger of fatiguing with about ten cards left in library, but he managed to string together a really really massive Mount Heroic turn. Truly a heroic moment. A truly heroic. He climbed the mountain, yeah. and it was to, combined with Snapdragon Scalers. It was an line and strike in there, so. Yeah, it was pretty massive. Okay, I can see in the chat here already. So we've got uh, we've got Tannen giving a shout out to Matt. We've got uh, a few people giving shout out to Tom. So I think these are two sort of titans of the game. So I'm I'm super excited for this I'm, matchup. I'm, I'm just wondering, like you know, ultimately I've always kind of believed that you know you can almost play anything in in Fab if you're a good player. Yep. And like I feel like this this uh, more than more than the decks, it's going to be about the the precision. Um, it's going to be, you know, about the, each of these players reading each other. Um, yeah, I think it's going to come down to the player, ultimately. Um. And just to give everyone an update, so in the other semi-final we have going on off-camera, we have uh, Nick Holding playing Prism against Rohan Kana on Viserai, which actually means to our viewers paying attention, we have four different decks in the top four, which is very exciting to me. Yes, no, it's, the top eight has been... Um, uh, great, um, but yeah, we, we soon. Uh, I mean, a matter of like, uh, well, these are untimed, but hopefully this game, you know, will go around like the 30 to 40 minute mark. We'll um, see who the two heroes are. But it, again, this is interesting because this is, of course, the the face down of what seemed to be the two dominant heroes from, uh, well, certainly this weekend from Tails. Yeah, so I think we've seen it develop throughout the season. So clearly we had a sort of string of dominant results from Briar. I think first we had the, the Cheerios list piloted by Tarek Patel to great success at US Nationals. And then we saw a bit of an evolution in some of the Briar builds, starting to run things like Channel Mount Heroic uh, with a few more blues in the deck just to have these huge spike turns where they just put out insane amounts of damage. Now, uh, we have seen, I think, more and more players pivot to things like Oldham and Bravo to counteract these strategies. So... All right, so anyway, I think we're about to get into the action. We've got Matt Rogers versus Tom Penny. Let's go. Let's see who's going to take it out and make it to the final. All right, so um, let's have a look at both their setups. I notice uh, Matt's got the Winter Whale and uh, um, the Rampart up there. And Tom, you know, fairly, fairly typical of this build, uh, his equipment setup. Yes, I believe so. So he's got the Bloodshed Skeletor, which helps give him a bit of protection against some of these big attacks, uh, as opposed to the Find Out Spring Tunic, which generates a lot of resources over the course of the game. So we see uh, Tom has kicked things off here with an Exude Confidence, so it has that ability to uh, pitch cards to pump it up. Okay, so we see an early double lightning press. Does Matt have the defense reaction to mitigate a bit of this damage here? So he did choose just to defend for six. Tom obviously wanting to, you know, get out the gates, go hard, go early here. Well, we sometimes in these, this, this, certainly this first turn, you don't go quite as hard because, you know, your opponent can just throw their whole hand down, but um, he's certainly in on this Exude. Yeah, so we'll have to see how this plays out for Tom. Now, one thing to pay attention to here is uh, there are... Okay, so we've got the Art of War. Okay, so this is quite a cool play here because it will pump up the... Um, it's going to pump up the defense, I believe, of the attack actions. Um, I think we might just be checking on the timing with the Exude Confidence here. Okay, no, no, it's all, we're all good. So Tom starts off in the bottom and Earth gets through two damage. Um, I think... He'll be pretty happy with this because that's kind of a turn that you can't do a whole lot with. But one thing is, those lightning presses are pretty critical for pr pushing through damage in the mid to late game. So we may see if that comes back to bite Tom later on. Okay, but he, uh, if this match goes long enough, he may see those. He may see those again. I know because he's played them both on the Exude Confidence, the lightning oh, presses here. Sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah, so they they are gone from the deck. So here we see an Enlightened Strike come out, and that cards that seen a lot of favour with the Olden players because it yeah. gives them access to a little bit of go again. So yeah, no. it, it's a it's a very cheap attack. It is, and Tom choosing just to take the damage here, 
And then uh, Matt's coming in with the Winter's Whale. There's no Ice Card Pitch there, so it is just vanilla 4 damage. Uh, you say vanilla 4, but it's still, uh, still 5, uh, followed by 4. Uh, if Tom doesn't throw any weight cards here, he's taking like, almost 25% of his life total. That's a really good um, point. Does, does, Tom, does Tom worry about throwing away this much life at the beginning of the game? Now, my understanding of this matchup is uh, Tom will pick and choose the spots a little bit, but he does want to be the aggressor here. So I think he might just assess what's in his hand, see what he can string together next turn to see if he wants to defend here. Because if he has non-attack action, I believe I saw a force of nature in his hand, he'd be able to defend. But I think he's willing just to sort of, you know, take the fight to Matt here. We can see Matt's equipment has the fairly standard setup of the Crown of Seeds, uh, the Tunic, the Crater Fist, and the Nolren Boots. The Crown of Seed and the Nolren Boots gives him access to almost like a pseudo Arcane Barrier too, if he needs it for the Rosetta Thorn. Obviously you need to make sure your timing's good with that. Yeah. And, but otherwise, yeah, the Tunic's great for building up resources over the course of the game. It's actually really strong as well for being able to come in with the... Oh, sorry. I'm going to stop talking about when we're back to the action. Oh. We see a Time of Harvest here. So Time of Harvest is very good because you can arsenal a card that you don't really want and then use it to get rid of it and draw back up. Also really strong because it helps you get towards those Embodiment of Lightnings, which are just very, very important for stringing together these big turns. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's a pretty cool card. Um, you know, three, and it has, again, it has Go Again. Yep, the Go Again, yep, very important in this kind of deck. So let's have a look. So he starts off here with a Ball Lightning. Oh, the villain of a piece. Still, yeah. still playable today. Exactly. And just to let all our viewers know who may not be aware, New Zealand and Australian nationals are, are exempt from the bans in Arata. Uh, just to let you all know. So we won't see any judge calls on the Sport Lightning here. <laughs> yeah. um, now, now, one question is obviously, yeah, um, Matt's uh, Oldenless is quite aggressive. Um, like, you know, are we going to see one player shift into the control? Or is this going to be just whoever grabs tempo? Because you know, honestly, a lot of matches, you know, you have one aggressive, one controlling, you know, regardless of what they are. Or are these two just going to be belting at each other's faces, trying to get tempo? Well, my understanding is that the Briar is generally the aggressive matchup. And just to let everyone know, so we've seen a, a force of nature fused here, creating the embodiment of lightning. Now, Tom's just content to come in here with a. Uh, Autumn Touch, I believe blue for six. So that's probably not the ideal cards that Tom wanted to see, but one thing is here, he is able to turn on the Rosetta Thorn um, and come in for attack after this. So it, it, we'll see if Matt you know, pitches to you know, protect some arcane damage. Yeah, because one thing to keep an eye out as well is, um, you know, heads up Autumn play if they need to, they can defend it and attack fully, and then pitch an Earth card to set up that shield against the arcane damage. Okay, so Matt content here just to, okay, so he does have the Ice React here, and yep, that's actually pretty powerful, so that's shut down the potential Rosetta Thorn. So I think Matt's going to be very happy with how that played out. Nice, he did for, he did for a couple, was it a Spinal Crush and a Tear Sunder I saw that he um, I to defend with? I believe it may have been a Cranial Crush in this instance, so I think Matt is going to be fairly happy throwing away some of these blue cards. Yeah. One thing, for, one thing to watch out for here is Tom playing Briar, he does need to be aware of sort of the power cards in his deck, you know. And in saying that, the deck has a very large number of power cards. Um, but when it comes down to it, I feel the Olden player has more cards they're willing to throw away than the Briar player is. Yeah, so Matt's not afraid to, to see some of these, you know. Some of us would like to hold on to these cards in these matches, but Matt really knows when to throw these away just to, you know, just to get ahead. Exactly, and we see Tom activate the Grasp of the Iron Eye header to make a rune chart. He's coming in with the ball lightning. So I feel, Tom, this is a little bit of a slower start than he might have liked to see, I think. Yeah. And certainly the life totals. Matt, Matt's been the aggressor in this one. Um, uh, he's still pretty comfortable on, uh, you know, 38 life, seven, seven life difference here at the moment. Absolutely. So I, I think, Tom, you know, one thing, he wants to keep up the tempo so he can set up this big Mount Heroic turn at some point. Um, but... Yeah, I think he would have, uh, you know, we saw that Autumn's Touch come down. It's not the most efficient attack on the Force of Nature. Now, if, um, if, Tom, if, if Tom gets behind, can he have turns where, you know, he can, you know, throw away a few cards, get behind, but then, like, you know, suddenly turn around? Can these Briar decks turn on a dime? I believe they can. They've, they've got access to, of course, Channel Mount Heroic, sort of the namesake card of the deck in a way. So, you know, we have seen games where the Briar player falls a little bit behind, takes a bit of damage, but then comes through with, say, Channel Mount Heroic into, you know, two, three, even four attacks followed by the Rosetta Thorn. Now, one thing is the Olden player does have access to cards like Blizzard. We saw that pitched earlier for the Ice React, which is great at shutting down these turns. And uh, it is able to create Frostbites in various ways. Uh, and, of course, the Ice React in general from the Olden Hero ability. 
Well, how much damage can like uh, these Briar decks actually throw out on um, one of those big turns? Uh, it's not unheard of to see sort of 25, 30 plus damage on the absolute biggest turn, so it does go pretty crazy. Oh, and Rosetta's getting in there. Yep, so Tom, I think he's probably happy with stringing together a bit of damage here. So there's a Crown of Seeds, Crown of Seeds activation here to prevent one. Rosetta Thorn is coming in for two plus two. And I believe Tom's last card in hand there is a Nimbleism, which he'll be pretty happy if he's able to Arsenal and doesn't get hit by an Ice React here. Yeah. I'm always happy to see a welcome to Wraith Common, you know, uh, even at a status stage of the game. Um, seeing some play in these decks. Yeah, Sink Below, one of the premier defense reactions in the game. And Matt just choosing to use it to defend for two there. Uh, I believe he may not have been too happy with the card in his hand. So he's choosing just the Arsenal. Now Matt's got quite a good setup here because he does have the Tunic ability to use Crown of Seeds or ramp it if he wants to. Um, the thing is, if you, if you pitch a blue, sometimes you don't actually need the additional resource from that, but hey, no one's gonna turn down a free resource. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so Tom, what's, if we see one thing as well to notice, Tom may have been willing to take a bit of early damage here because it activates his Scar for a Scars. I can see he's got one in hand, and I think I, I spy with my little eye. I think that might be a Channel Mount Heroic, so. I, I'm pretty sure uh, I, it is a Channel Mount Heroic, so I haven't seen one of these turns on, on coverage, uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing if we pull it off. And as one of the viewers has pointed out, uh, there is a good point. Uh, if Tom's Briar list is running something like Pulse of Candle Hold, that is very good at actually getting back Mount Heroic. So to, to not, not just three, but four. Yeah. So how is it going to navigate this turn? Uh, is Scar the kind of card that you lead with here? Or uh, you obviously lead with a Mount Heroic? Um, I know, so the, the channel Mount Heroic is so important in this matchup that Tom may want to like be careful that he picks and chooses the spot to use it correctly here. Yeah. Um, but I, see, I do see another, I think it's another Pulse. It is a pulse in his hand. I mean, if, if Tom's able, one thing he's maybe a little bit worried about is the uh, potential for the ice react here. Okay, but here we see a good use of pitch, um, of the importance of sequencing here. So he's pitched these cards in order to, so when he plays his last card from hand, he still has one resource up. Um, he can play his card from hand, he can play his card from arsenal if he needs to, and then come up with the Rosetta Thorn. Amazing, yeah. So the Channel Mount Heroic is active. A little bit awkward here because for Tom, I believe that's Nimbleism in his arsenal, and he can play it out for the damage, but then the Embodiment of Lightning will get wasted because the Scar does have natural go again. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what Tom decides to do here. Because there is the opportunity, of course, just to come with the Scar for seven, followed up by Rosetta Thorn for two plus two, and then save that Nimbleism to come in for a massive turn next turn. Okay, as long as you have to keep the Keep the Mount Heroic around. Okay, so this is definitely the players are taking their time here because... Okay, so... <laughs> here we go. Uh, you know, I've, I've not, oh. Okay, so he does choose to just go for it here. So he's putting out... The Scar for a Scar is coming in for 10 damage. Wow. Just maximum damage on this turn. And uh, putting some dice out there just to show how much damage is. What's Matt contemplating at the moment? Well, I believe I saw Matt has a Command and Conquer in Arsenal here, so um, that's actually quite a heads-up play from Tom. By playing the Nimbleism, it makes the Command and Conquer much less threatening. Yeah. Uh, now, Matt may choose to just cycle that to the bottom of his deck here, uh, but we'll have to see what he decides to go with. So we see the Crown of Siege activation. So he's got one prevention shield up, he's gonna draw a card with two resources active, so he still has plenty for uh, the Rampart. So we now have commands on the bottom. And what did he draw? Well, I think I see a command in Matt's hand as well. Uh, he could have drawn one, I believe I did see one in Arsenal, but mm. uh, I think he might be running the full three, but I'm not entirely sure here. So these, like, you, you might think, you know, Matt's on 38 life, he's got a bunch of cards in hand, you know, this is pretty simple, but as we've seen multiple times across both Draft and Classic Constructed, every life matters. Yeah. Uh, so it's, uh, it's going to be, okay, so we're seeing wow. a block for 10 come in here. Now I quite like this because he's got one prevention shield still up from the Crown of Seeds. He's got one resource open to use uh, from the Nolrun boots. So that is going to fully prevent the Arcane from the Rosetta Thorn here. 
And there's a lot of pointing backwards and forwards between cards here. Yep, I think they, both yeah. players are just making sure they play everything very clean here. Oh. So Matt Comfortable just taking the two damage here. Um, Autumn has a lot of good sort of... Uh, for example, if you have an ice card, you're able to come in with a Winter's Whale, or you can just set up that Arsenal card to keep sort of the, the Crown of Seeds going. So, would Tom, is Tom going to be disappointed with that turn? I mean, because obviously there's a lot of resource, a lot of planning went into that turn, and the net gains only two damage. Is that, is he disappointed here, or is he still, is it still going to... Well, I think he might be a little bit disappointed here, because he's drawn two Channel Mount Heroics, and... That is a little bit tough because I think Tom was really wanting to see some number of go again attacks to really put the pressure back on Matt. So we might see if he's looking at playing this, pitching the Mount Heroics to play Sonata here, which is a possibility. Yeah, so this, this is probably, yeah, in terms of tempo, this did not work for him this, this turn. Okay, yep, so we see him here pitch the two channel Mount Heroics for the Sonata, so this is going to be very important to see if this hits or not. And sometimes uh, it's better to be lucky and good, as one of my good friends says. And uh, Tom hits the two attack actions, so that is really a huge boon to him here to allow him to sort of continue on with this turn. And when I say lucky, I mean the Briar players, they structure the decks in such a way that the Snow is not what likely to hit. Easily could have been the situation here where he just whiffed that. Yeah, that would have been disastrous, absolutely disastrous if he missed there. Um, now, one great thing for Tom here is that means the Channel Mount Heroic is going to stick around for an additional turn. So that is huge in this matchup. So now we see, so he's just revealing his cards, I believe, not just playing them out here. So we'll see if Matt has something like the Ice React. Um, so I think we're just looking, waiting to see what's happening with the Arcane damage here from the Sonata. Okay, so Matt's choosing to activate the Crown of Seeds, that's kind of that pseudo-arcane barrier we were talking about to uh, prevent one of the arcane. And I think we may see a pitch to the Nolren Boots here. And one thing to keep note of, like, you might be thinking, well, two Channel Mount Heroics on the bottom, you know, that's kind of bad news for Tom. But one positive thing is, if Tom draws another Snarder that he's able to play at some point, it allows him to shuffle his deck and just get those hopefully broken up a little bit for him. Yeah. So they're not completely buried because of the nature of the stick. He can, he can find them again with any luck. And hopefully just find one of them. Absolutely. Two of them. So he's, he's played this about, you'd say, about as best as he could hope. Oh, and that's a little bit tough for Tom there. He reveals a blue card off the Ravenous Rabble. That is one feature of the Channel Mount Heroic deck. It does run a lot more blues, particularly Earth Blues, to get those Channel Mount Heroics down. It does make your uh, Ravenous Rabbles a little bit less consistent, as has happened here. So it's still coming in for five because the Channel Mount Heroic, but, you know, uh, Tom would have been a lot happier seeing it coming for seven. <laughs> yeah. That's um, still, I mean, uh, he had a perfect Sonata, let's, uh, let's say 50, he's doing 50-50 this turn. All right, so we see the staunch response come out. So an efficient use of Matt's resources there. And then again, the ball lightning's coming in after that. So this ball lightning's coming in for either five or six. Unfortunately, I can't quite catch the color there, but a threatening attack nonetheless. Now, uh, Matt does have full information here, so he does know that the last card in Tom's hand is that exude confidence. Uh, so we'll see if that plays into how he wants to address this. Okay, so we see, I believe that may have been a red ball lightning, so we see the Crater Fist in the sink below, and there we see the Ice React again, and these are very, very powerful here because I think we see Tom shaking his head a little bit here. Yeah. He would have loved to play out that Exude Confidence, um, but unfortunately for him, that's going back on top of his deck, so... Excellent technical play here from Matt, sort of really utilizing the strength of his hero. Yeah. And uh, there was a card that he drew this turn, uh, you know, off the Sonata, and now it's uh, being put back again. It's, uh... But one good thing here for Tom is he sort of missed a little bit on, you know, it looked like he was going to miss on the Mount Heroic turn, but because he yeah. pitched two, he's got another go at it. So yeah. he's probably looking, saying, look, show me some Scar for Scars, show me some Rebels, yeah. Enlightened Strikes, give me the good stuff. Yeah, it, can still, it can still happen here. And yeah, just a shame about uh, the Ravenous Rebel. Um, but Matt's got to be, Matt's had um, a, yeah, two big turns of Mount Heroic and he's managed to navigate them pretty well. Expertly, I think he's uh, showing why he's one of the best in the business. And of course, yeah, Matt's had a, a bit of a rougher uh, journey to the top eight uh, this year. Um, last year he was undefeated. He was, he kind of... Top eight. He, ran, he ran the table, the table was his the whole, the whole day, or the whole two days, but he, he took a few losses on his way to this top eight. 
Yep, that's true. So he had a little bit of a tougher journey this year, um, but you know he's managed to fight his way through to the top four, and obviously wants to make that final to defend his title. Yeah. Uh, if he doesn't win this, uh, will, will we be calling somebody else for goat if he doesn't win this year? Who knows? Who knows? I guess we'll have to see. So here we see another Sonata. Um, I believe we're just seeing. If uh, Tom may be deciding what, what he wants to snart, if he wants to pitch one of those cards in his hand, or Matt may be considering using his crown of seeds in response. We'll just have to see here. Right, looks like. Yep, here we go. There we go, and I believe that's a force of nature. So I think Tom has hit on this and can choose one of those attack actions to put in his hand. So which one? Which one? What is it? What is his choice here? I suspect he's going to go for the Raven Stravel, just that built and go again is so powerful, particularly on those um, Mount Heroic turns. And we see the Snyder, another good thing for here, Tom, is he is able to break up those channel Mount Heroics like we talked about, so there's not too... Well, the who knows, there may be. The deck is nice and fresh, and Tom will be hoping here that there will be a red card on top of his deck. He's hoping, Matt, please cut it to a red card. Please cut it to a red card. Yep, so we're about to see a bit, uh, a bit of fireworks here, and that's the, you know, the nature of the Ravenous Rebel, like we said. Um, last turn he may have been able to push through a bit of damage, but hitting that blue off the Ravenous Rebel set him back a little bit. Oh! Okay, and he hits the red this time, and it's lightning press on top. So this, but it's another ravenous. Ra it's a, oh, it's beautiful. So this ravenous rabble. So that's what he grabbed from the Sonata. Yeah, and um, beautiful. Now this one is coming through for seven, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, the other thing I do see is I don't know if you can see that uh, I glimpse a certain majestic card in his hand there as well. Oh, one of my favourite cards in the game. Uh, you can't beat it. The old enlightened strike. Yeah. Still, still one of the most powerful generics that you can come across. It's so, so good in Briar as well, with the ability to create those embodiment of lightning tokens. It turns on the uh, the possibility of the lightning strike for seven with built and go again in a way, or just drawing a card to continue yeah. on your turn. Why, why just make one choice on a lightning strike? When yeah, you have... but take them all. <laughs> yeah, um, definitely. So let's see how Matt. Now I can't see. Matt seems to have. It looks like he's got a Channel Lake Frigid in hand, so he does have access to that Ice uh, Alden React as well looks, if he needs it. Looks also like the alternate art version as well. Very pretty card. Everyone may notice that Matt is uh, playing with some of the, the finest versions of uh, these cards that you can find. Okay, so one thing is there we see, Tom, I believe he has a blue Earth Force Surge in hand, which he chose not to pitch uh, to play the Sonata. So it's potentially playing around the Ice React, or potentially he wants to set something up a little bit so he's got that Rosetta Thorn. Okay, so we might be seeing an Ice React here, potentially. And I think, again, we have to give full credit to Matt here for navigating these turns, like you mentioned, Alan, expertly so far. Yeah. Look, it's really easy to crumble when your opponent puts this much pressure Absolutely. Uh, on you. Um, and to make, and just small mistakes. Small mistakes can, you know, accumulate and put you that far back. So we'll see what's... Now one thing for Tom here is it's not as devastating as one, maybe one of those previous turns because he does have access to that Enlightened Strike, so you know we might see him end the turn with Enlightened Strike for 5 draw a card, but that may influence what he puts on top of the deck. So he has chosen to put the Earth Law Surge on top, I believe, uh, unless it was the East Strike on top, which kind of leads to me... Yeah, not sure. All I can see was the Exude in his hand. I couldn't see the second card now, so... Oh, Matt actually drops. Yeah, bleeds. Up. Yeah. It's a considerable amount of damage for Matt so far in this match, taking one turn. Okay, so we'll have to see what Tom is going to come in with here. Okay, so it looks like he's considering just the Exude Confidence. I quite like this play here. So this will allow him to get that Enlightened Strike set up in Arsenal for next turn. So Matt choosing to defend for the full seven here. And Tom she's Arsenal and Pass. So I think there was a bit of a consideration for Tom there whether he keeps the Earth Law in order to pitch to pump it up against damage. Uh, but I do quite like the play here of setting up a five card hand with an incredibly strong defensive deck like Oldham. And we've seen Matt just put on a masterclass for, through these first few turns. Yeah. I think you want as many five card hands as possible in order to try punch through. Yeah, well, I mean, this, this, was, the, this was the turn that uh, Tom certainly pushed the most damage through. Um, but I mean, the life totals have been, haven't been creeping downwards. You know, some of the other matches we've seen, it's been incredibly, incredibly rapid. But this, this scene, this is certainly 
uh, for Tom's deck is, is a grind to get get anything out of Matt. Absolutely. You know, I saw something similar in the last game against Bravo. He looked to be struggling, and he just strung together a big turn at the end and, and took it down. But yeah, we'll have to say Tom almost had had no library left. He's down to about ten or so cards, not very many strong ones left. So let's see what Tom has lined up here. If you can, if that's an unattack action, if you can play a couple into something like the Enlightened Strike, it's very powerful. But even just you know Nimbleism, Ball Lightning, there's lots of very very strong players open to him here. Yeah, and I also see a Nimbleism in his hand as well. But yeah, here's the here's the Ball Lightning. Now, I quite like this here because it's a little bit awkward because it's coming in for two, and then you get someone to commit you know a defending card for three. So I feel if you know if Tom's trying to push through as much damage as possible, then this might be the way to do it. What, so what does he have to follow this up? So we've got a nimbleism, so the chain has been closed. So maybe we'll see something like an enlightened strike for ten here potentially. Maybe he is staring. He is staring at the the strike in his arsenal. And I think we're already seeing the impact of that Ice React because Tom knows if he chooses to go again mode here and he gets Ice Reacted, he won't get the benefit of that Rosetta Thorn. Okay, so Tom really taking his time here, which is totally understandable. Back card to the bottom, and... So it looks like we'll probably... So Tom helping us out here. So that is just coming in for 10. And of course, he can pop his boots. He can pop the boots. I suspect he may hold on to those for now because those are quite critical for a huge turn at some point in the game. Um, I do quite like the enlightened strike for 10 here because, again, it means he can have access to that five card hand potentially next turn. Um, if he gets ice reacted, it's not really the absolute end of the world. Yeah. So, Spinal Crush. Oh, and there's the uh, fancy fate for scene. Yep, uh, printed in traditional Chinese. Beautiful card. Yeah. So, that's defending for seven currently. Yep, so the players, I think, are just working it through. So Matt's choosing to take three here. I can see Matt has the Enlightened Strike in hand. So he has the option, quite a powerful play on Ultima is the Enlightened Strike for five, draw a card. Because in a way, it doesn't matter what card goes yeah. into Arsenal because you can crown the seeds it away if you need to. Yeah. But we'll see. And I think that may be what he's choosing to do here. We'll have a look. Yes. Okay, so he's going for the E-Strike, draw a card. Now we'll see. I think I have a feeling, depending on Tom's hand, like sometimes with Briar you can get stuck with like no access to go again, and so you choose to defend because you can't use all your cards efficiently. Yeah. But in this spot, if he's liking what it looks like, I think he's just like, you know what, happy to take the damage. Okay. Take the hand, but um, importantly, Matt now has a card in Arsenal, so now he's able to draw it. You know, he's got a five card hand now, uh, essentially, um, with that. So, ooh, did we see what it was? It looked like a sink a lot, potentially. Oh, great. Oh, here we go. Drawing some cards. Now, I think what Matt doesn't want to see here is a scar for a scar, because I'll tell you what, Alan, I played a lot of ninja and against a lot of decks, and it's always the worst when you get, you get your opponent to one life below you, and then they punish you with that scar for a scar with go again. I mean, scar for a scar, you know, doing, doing damage since um, the very beginning of Mab. <laughs> Uh, if you're unaware, the, the very first Fab official Fab event was actually an Ira. Oh, event. and there we go. It was an Ira deck event where many scars were played that day. So, I, uh, to be fair, I don't know if Tom actually had this in his hand, so he's happy to take the damage to go. But uh, either way, I think he's probably pretty happy that he's got the scar for a scar down here. And I imagine, uh, you know, Matt might be shaking his head a little bit, going. <laughs> He's saying, what, what is, what, why are the fates to, oh, well, you're right, it was a defense, it was a sink below. Yep, so that's a pretty good draw off the Enlightened Strike, you know, it's pretty fortunate he drew it, you could say, but to be honest, like we say, it's not a huge deal. If you got, I mean, defense reaction is nice, but because of the way Crown of Seed works, you could really have any card there. Yeah. Like, to be honest, yes, sure, sink below is probably the best one, but, yeah. I mean, the deck runs a lot of defense reactions. I think that may be the first or second yeah, one we've seen. It's pulling, like, you know, full, full number of red fates and, uh, fates and sink lows. I believe so, and uh, very good at hitting these breakpoints here. Now, does Tom have a second... Uh, let's see if he has a second on attack action to hit on the embodiment of lightning. If he had, like, a, the Mount Heroic out, of course, that scar would be coming in for a lot more. <laughs> it would indeed. Okay, so we see... The Weave Earth come down, triggering the embodiment of lightning. The chain has now been closed. 
One interesting thing as well is there's uh, sometimes some cool interactions between the shield and the non-attack actions for the embodiments because these non-attack actions reset the chain as well. Yeah, giving him another go. Oh, and here's a classic snatch. Now this is a very powerful play coming with the snatch for, so it's not being buffed by the Weave Earth, but it is coming in for four with go again. Uh, now, Matt does not have an arsenal card, so he doesn't really have access to that, you know, Crown of Seeds efficient block here. Yeah. But, you know, he does have access to the Brampton of the Rancid if he really wants to use it, but not, and he's actually got the Tunic, so it actually is really efficient here if, if he wants it. Would he throw away the Tunic at this point in the game? Oh, no, sorry, Alan, to clarify, Matt, he can use the, the resources oh, sorry, from the Tunic to, to turn on the Rampant. It's been to wonder for a second there. Now, one thing, I think I did spy a Command and Conquer in Tom's hand. Uh, now, Which again isn't that good now. Yeah, and it's, uh, that's the thing against Oldham with access to Crown of Seeds. You know, sometimes it, Command and Conquer is an incredibly powerful card. You know, the CNC, it's uh, very, very good. But in this, in this particular situation, maybe not as good. So he has used that tunic to activate the Rampant of the Ram's Head. This is defending for four. Um, he's probably pretty confident Tom doesn't have lightning press, seeing as yeah. we've seen two of them already. Yeah. Oh, okay, so he's got the Pulse of Ice and Loft. So, really cool here because it kind of shuts down, it puts up the, that prevention shield, and on top of that, it is, you know, you get the double, so you get the Ice and Earth React. Uh, guys are asking for a report on the other game. I don't know, we'll see if we can get somebody maybe to, to check it out, but if we, if we can't... Um, we, we are totally focused on this game because this is a very complicated game. Yep, so we'll come back in another point. So the two damage shield, prevention shield that went up, um, plus the defense for two there has fully blocked out that snatch. And again, I think Tom is just struggling a little bit to get the damage through. One thing to keep in mind, he does have the two channel mount heroics left in the deck. But so far, Matt putting on a bit of a masterclass. Now, I haven't seen any Zalus Beltings or Rousey Ancients just yet. I, I do wonder if the Zalus Belting, it does defend for two, if it may have been taken out for this particular matchup. Yeah. Well, did he, I mean, we've seen Matt be super aggressive because of those cards in his deck. Is this a match where he decided not to be, not to have those cards in? Especially, yeah, the not being able to defend for three. Yeah, I think that may be, against some of the more slower decks, things like Prism, for example, or Bravo, it's quite critical to have those go against. Yeah. Against a deck like Briar, you probably figure, look, I've just got to like, defend for a significant amount of the game before I maybe pivot and turn the corner. And particularly in a deck with a lot of break points, you already have a number of cards that defend for two, like elemental cards, and probably again, a little bit uh, much. Having, having, a, having a Guardian deck that has go again is a fairly novel idea. It for is. The longest of time it's been defend hit hard, defend, hit hard, or just, you know, fatigue your opponent, so, um, but yeah, those are very cool additions to the Oldham, the Oldham Armoury. Okay, so we've seen Matt choose to pitch the Crown of Seeds here, so he does have a one prevention shield up currently, and to access the two resources to uh, activate the Rampant of the Rand Seed if need be. I mean, you can't block the, oh, we see the Art of War. Now, Art of War, incredibly efficient, because sometimes you, the, the thing about Art of War in this deck as well is it allows you to defend uh, very efficiently with your attack action. Matt num runs a significant number of attack actions in the deck. Yeah. The other thing is as well, when you pitch a blue card, you use one resource for Crown, one for Rampant, and sometimes you have that third resource floating, maybe for Arcane Barrier, but in situations where you're not facing down Arcane damage, being able to use that Art of War to use that third resource is actually very, very powerful. And you notice, of course, he exiled a uh, CNC. Um, for the Art of War to draw the two cards, so that's true. And probably just not, obviously not valuing this card, that card in this particular yeah. matchup. Yeah, and Command and Conquer, powerful card. You know, sometimes we like to say CNCs get degrees, but in this particular situation, he may be having a look at things like the Blood Chief, the Grasp, thinking it's not going to be quite the tempo play that I need it to be. And Tom may actually not off an Arsenal card if he doesn't need to. Yeah. So that may have influenced his decision here. It's just much easier to get rid of it at this point if you don't think it's going to have the payoff. Absolutely. Match up, so. so you see Tom starting to activate the rune chant here. Not the most efficient play because the null rune boots with the one resource active are going to be great to defend against this here. Um, but it does kind of force Matt into you know, defending a card for just a weapon attack. I think the final card in Tom's hand, oh, is he going to frost him here? He is. Ooh. So I believe that card's a Command and Conquer in Tom's hand, but like we say, the Command and Conquer, not the greatest card ever really uh, against this Oldham deck because of the Crown of Seeds. Now Matt has effectively turned off any Scarf of Scars, not that uh, we've already seen two Scars from uh, 
Tom that uh, he has turned off the go again on any uh, future scars for the moment for this turn. And one cool little play here, I think it's the small things that can really stack up in these games. So we see Matt uh, pitch a ice card to the Winter's Whale. Yep. Now I know he did take two damage from the Rosetta Thorn last turn. That has actually turned off Tom's ability to defend for two with the Arcanite Skullcap. Mm. I think Tom would have loved here to be able to throw the Skullcap and one of his other big blocks like the Grasp or the Blood yep. Sheath in front of this attack. And here... I mean, it feels a little bit worse to throw your two guaranteed block for twos in front of this here. Yeah, and Grasp is, I love Grasp just because it has that two defense on it. It's, um, with, you know, no restriction, hasn't got, uh, you know, Blade Breaker or anything like that on it. Um, but yeah, you're right. Uh, Matt's just come under to turn off that skull cap. Now we may see to see if Tom lives to regret the choice to play the Blood Sheath over the Fine Nails Tunic. Uh, again, like I say, these players have a lot more experience in these matchups than I do. The one thing I'd say is generally what I've heard from players, the kind of wisdom, if you put it that way, is in very long games, Tunic can be incredibly resource effective because you get so many activations on it. Uh, you know, once per three turns, if the turn game goes 15, 20 turns long, that's a lot of free resources. Yeah, and we, I, I must admit, I've had those games where I've thrown away uh, Tunic too early, thinking, uh, you know, it was uh, just thrown away too early, and then having so many turns where I could have done with those resources, um, just, you know, making wrong decisions about blocking. And here we see, so Tom is defended with the Blood Sheath Skeletor here, and so, like I say, I feel he would have loved for that to be the Arcanite Skullcap instead. And we can see a little bit of a tech card here from the Briar player, the Overload. I quite like that, because it has Dominate. Uh, if it hit, it has Go again. Okay, so we might see if Tom wants to take this opportunity to throw out the Command and Conquer. I mean, he probably knows that it's just going to get Crown of Seeds away, so it's not going to be the best attack ever. But if he doesn't have a great hand, is it just, you might as well use the CNC now. I think it might just be a case of, like, look, I've got to get rid of this card, so yeah. let's do it. So there we see, you know, the uh, Crown of Seeds just cycling that card back to the bottom, Prevention Shield up. And this is why Ultim's so powerful, right? Because you can defend with one card here, and Matt is taking one damage. Well, alternatively, maybe he wants to take a bit of life and hit back hard. Okay, now I think we might be in for a bit of fireworks here because, you know, the old man Oldham, <laughs> he's got a premier attack, the Oaken Old, and are we going to see it come down? Oh. Yes, we are, and that's dual fused. Wow. Now, I don't think Tom has a good way to defend against this. Matt has timed this very well. Arcanite Skullcap is not active, but she's got to has a, d a counter on it already. So at max, we're gonna see the armor being able to defend for four here. And even that plus something like a force of nature getting buffed by the embodiment of Earth is not gonna be enough to shut this down. Yeah, so this could be, I mean, this could be a pretty swing, a pretty big swing considering, yeah, double fused. I mean, that's coming in for nine dominate and two random cards. Does how does, how does he defend against this? I think one, actually, one option open to Tom here is he may actually consider taking the full nine, depending on his hand, and seeing what he can make happen. The issue with defending with one card here, and it really depends, I can't quite see his hand, is that then you still take six damage anyway, or five to six damage, and then you go down to, you know, not, you go down to one card in hand, which isn't really doing anything. Yeah. The issue is, of course, the cards are random, so you could end up like, you know, you could end up gambling a little bit here, ending severely punished if you cannot use your two cards. Out of a half plus. the cards, I say. Let's see what he does. So, all right, so he could just he could drop to seventeen right now. Yep, we'll have to see what Tom is thinking of here. And like I say, we have to give full credit to Matt for very good sequencing. He's played this extremely well, noting the defense on the armor, sort of baiting out that bloodshed skeleton, yep. oh. and Tom taking the full damage here. Okay, so no cards out. So he's going to be left with two cards, but... Which two cards, you know? I believe, can we just get a double check? Are those random for the Oak and Old? Um, on Oak and Old, uh, they are yep. two random cards. Um, they're not discarded. They do go to the bottom of a deck, yep. so they could be seen again, um, possibly, if... Uh, he can shuffle his deck again, but I mean, uh, that's probably... Alright, they're just using some dice to randomly yep. sort it out. And Tom's looking at what he's lost. Okay, and the thing is, I used to play a lot of Katsu vs Bravo, and there was a similar interaction with Crippling Crush. Sometimes you just had to live with it, take the damage, yeah. and hope your two cards can do something. Yeah. I think with this Oak and Old... And that's okay, as long as uh, he doesn't get hit with another Oak and Old next turn. One thing we haven't seen from Tom, which uh, I'm sure he really wants to get going, is we have not seen a plunder on turn at all this game. And I think he needs something like that in order to really push through the damage. So he's been left here with a force of nature, and that might be a weave earth, and that is going to be a little bit upsetting. 
And surely you just want to play as many Ponder runs as you can before you cannot play any more Ponder Yeah, <laughs> that's absolutely right. true. Just for the sake of saying goodbye. Okay, so we'll see what Tom's doing here. Now, I believe that might be an Exude Confidence in Arsenal, but I'm not 100% sure. Tom's taking his time. The life totals are still so close in this matchup. Yeah, I feel, I get the sense that Matt has started to pull away a little bit in this game now. Because uh, Tom, with that, taking that Oak and Old, has lost a little bit of flexibility. Okay, so we've got the Force of Nature, fused with the Weave Earth. And we're about to find out, is this the Exude or, yes, it's So it is an Exude. Now we might see if Tom wants to, in the attack step here, pump it up in order to preemptively do it to try sort of, you know, I think the, or maybe he'll pass over to Matt to allow him to crown of seeds, we'll just have to see. Okay, I think we've just got word that Prism has won the other semi-final, I believe. So it looks like we will have a Prism in the final. Yeah, that's not confirmed yet, but... Uh, not absolutely confirmed yet, yeah, but we will, we will get that confirmed for you. If it is true, that does mean Nick Holding is again undefeated. Okay, so we see the defense come through here. So the Autumn's Touch and the Rampant. We have, we're just, just uh, to interrupt, we have got confirmation that Prism is Fruit of the Finals. Congratulations, Nick Holding. Um, back to this match, though. Fate for scene. No, no I, what yeah. Is he, what is he doing there? I think we might just have a priority issue here because if this is in the defending window as opposed to reaction step, Matt would not be able to play the fate for scene. So I think we'll just double check what's happened here. Yeah, but if he has played the fate for scene, doesn't it mean he's stepping, he's, you know, admitted he's going to that step? Uh, no, because the, uh, the active player has priority here. So we'll just, I'm sure they'll clear that up between themselves. Yeah. Because like I said, if this is in the attacking step before it's gone to the reaction step, then Tom is able to pitch the Exude Confidence to put that up to seven, and then Matt will not be able to react. So did Matt just give a, was that a, a little bit of a blunder there? That may have been a slight misstep. Um, I mean, the thing is he wouldn't have been able to do it anyway, so, you know, worst case, it's kind of just given away a bit of information. Yeah. Now, Tom, that's probably not the card he wanted to see off the draw, the Pulse of Candle Hold. I mean, one thing to keep in mind is that it can be used to put the Channel Mount Rock back on top if he really needs to. Yeah. And there we go, Channel Lake Frigid. Okay, so Channel Lake Frigid. Very good against Briar, um, a lot more impactful against the Cheerios than it is the, the Mount Heroic build, because Mount Heroic does run a number of additional blues. So now Tom looking at the Bacardi Arsenal the last turn, since he moved the, got rid of the Exude from the, uh, the Arsenal, so we don't know what that is at the moment, unless you saw that, saw what it was, Karen? Uh, I, I believe it's a Pulse of Candle Hold in Tom's Arsenal at the moment. Okay. So that can be used to get back the Channel Mount Heroic back on top, along with something like um, a blue Earth card, so he's able to play it next turn. Oh, but I see a Tome as well. I see a Tome of Harvest. Now, the Channel Lake Frigid is really doing a lot of work here, because instead of just pitching one card to play it, mm. it does cost four. So I feel like this game's still on a bit of a knife edge. Like I say, I feel Matt does have the slight edge right now, but you know, anything can happen in these games. And I think I spotted a Gorganian Tome in Tom's hand, so mm -hmm. that Channel Lake Frigid is actually doing a yeah. lot right now. So if this would be the, if that, if that lake, uh, if the lake wasn't down, um, Tom could possibly be doing his big heroic turn at this point. Uh, I couldn't quite see if he had the heroic in hand. Well, sorry, I shouldn't say heroic, and just he could be pulling off a massive turn here yeah. if it wasn't for the fact of um, the, the lake basically kind of semi-locking him down. Okay, now I think the issue for Tom here is he does seem to have a number of red cards in hand. Well, I see a Snatch, and you've got to see, the, there seems to be a Sonata there as well. So the third Sonata, oh, that would be the third Sonata? I believe, I believe your correct it would be. Yes, yeah, so the Channel Mount Horrocks from earlier have been randomised due to the Sonata shuffle. Um, so we are not sure where, where that is in the deck at the moment. So we can see Tom has the Lightning Surge and the Snatch in hand. So for, he does have the ability to play the Snatch for one resource with Go Again, which is quite powerful. 
but you know, if he gets ice reacted from Oldham, that makes his life very, very difficult. And of course, Matt uh, has a full forehand grip at the moment, including a fat scene in there. I mean, is there any way Tom for Tom to get out of this, this turn, or does he just have to continue? I mean, what are his options here? I feel playing the snatch out might be his best bet. I mean, again, with that tunic, uh, with that access to tunic for the rampant ram's head with crown of seeds, Matt is very, feeling very, very comfortable here. Or just the fate for scene, that'll do yeah. it too. Oh, any bottoms, whatever he saw. Yeah, now Tom, I can't quite see. I think he has a snada and a lightning surge. So we'll see if he might just arsenal and pass the turn to set up for next turn. What, what, are, what is the arsenal of these two cards? I'd you? say the Lightning Surge because it gets go again when played from Arsenal. Now, how long do you think Matt can keep around the, the lake for? Uh, we'll have to see. I know he does run a fairly large number of ice cards. Uh, so, you know, he does have the, the potential to have it around for next turn as well. And it looks pretty successful at the moment. Uh, yeah. Since um, there's no damage uh, traded. That was, that yeah, seems an easy turn for Matt there, thanks to the lake. Yeah, I think I might have spotted at least one ice card in Matt's hand. Okay, if he's able to pick up another ice card here and play something like the Glacial Footsteps, or even the Terra Sunder, yeah. this could start to get very, very dicey for Tom. One thing for Tom is he does have the Arcanite Skullcap uh, with full defense up at the moment. Okay, so it looks like he's come down with the Glacial Footsteps. Now, I think Tom. Not few? Uh, what's that? Uh, it's not fused there, which I think, uh, as, as a finisher in the very end game, it does matter. Yeah. But for now, he just kind of wants to strip cards from Tom's hand. Yeah. So the Domina actually wouldn't uh, be as useful. That, that's correct. Now I wonder here for Tom. This may be a bit of a window for him if he's willing to take this damage. Uh, the Channel Lake Frigid looks like it's going to go away. Only one ice card in the pitch zone at the moment. Um, so if Tom has a good enough hand here, he might be thinking, this is my opportunity. The tunic is not active, so another thing he doesn't have to fight against. It might be my opportunity to, to come back for a string together a quite a big turn and see what I can do. So does he oh, just throw the skull cap in here? I do like the skull cap block here just because at this point in the game, the life totals can sort of change quite quickly, particularly if Tom has a very big turn lined up. So you may as well get the use out of it, the big block while you can. All right, well, yeah, Tom took a lot of damage to that turn, but... Um the, the lake is gone, he's got a four card, oh, and he's got the, the Sonata. Oh, there's, there's a plunder, <laughs> well, there's all the plunder run, well, most of the plunder runs there, so um, that's a bit... Um... I think the plunder run is pretty central to the game plan because you need to be able to have a big enough attack that you sort of can't go through. Yeah, so you've got to be disappointed seeing all of those come together on your side. I mean, the, at least the deck is shuffled now. That is correct, yeah. So I think I... Potentially spotted a channel Mount Heroic in Tom's turn, uh, in Tom's hand. Maybe incorrect, a little bit tough to see, but we'll see what happens here. Yeah. One day we'll get uh, we'll get cams on the hands. We will now. Hand cam, cams on the hands. Now Matt has pitched an ice card here. I'm. We can't quite see if he's got another one in hand. This could be quite a, an interesting mind game bluff play. You know, if he yeah. even if he doesn't have the ice card, he might be saying, well, you know, I'm pitching it to this, so of course I've got the other one. All right, there's an embolism, setting up the uh, setting up the lightning. So we've got the embodiment of Earth down. Here we see the overload. So it's a little bit of tech Tom runs. So this one's coming in for six with Dominate. <laughs> On hit, it does have go again. Uh, so Matt is, will be able to defend it for at least five just with a card plus shield plus crown. If he has the earth card as well, that will be enough to stop it. So I think Tom really, really, really wants us to hit so we continue on with his turn. Well, let's see what's, yeah. So Rampart is going out. Yeah, now I... I think from Matt's hand, he has drawn another ice card, which can be quite powerful here. So he's willing to throw away the other command and conquer. But he takes some damage. Yep, so he chooses not to use the rampart here, which I kind of agree with, because you might want to save that for the break point, for like a, you know, a four power attack that comes in after. As a point in time, we'll be happy he gets to go again. And oh, actually, that's a good point. Uh, if you have pointed out, it was guaranteed go again because of the embodiment of lightning. So it was a slightly lower risk play than, um, than we might have thought. Yeah. And is this going to be the third Command and Conquer? Oh. Okay. 
and it's just such disrespect to this iconic card but like some matchups uh, some card you know um, some cards just aren't that useful so okay so looks like Matt has chosen to use the ice card here. And we have lost our feed. Okay, our apologies, everyone. We um, have unfortunately. We have unfortunately. Okay, no, we're back. We're back. Phew. Sorry about that. We had a minor, minor technical issue, uh, but we're back on. Yes, it suddenly came up, no HDMI, and what seems to have happened here? Well, at least you can see the live totals. Okay, so here we see the Lightning Surge come down for four. So it looks like Matt has the Enlightened Strike and Arsenal. And I think for Tom here, his game plan at the stage is he really, you know, he needs that one big turn to put, Mac on, to put um, Matt on the back foot, yeah. followed up by a Channel Mount Heroic to sort of try and string something together with the Snapdragon Scalers. Yeah. But is, is, Matt, is Tom getting to the point where, because, you know, previously, you know, you've seen um, Tom take some, take some hits to, you know, rally a turn. Um, but now that he's down to 10, how many of those hits can he take? I think the answer is very few. He's quickly losing that flexibility. Even things like the blue glacial footsteps, things like cranial crush, yeah. um, uh, quickly becoming must blocks at this stage. Yeah, I did see Matt looking at the possibly the number of cards in his library as well. Uh, yes. Checking uh, his resources there. Um, but yeah, but Tom still does have uh, the moment three, uh, well, he's got one on his skull cap and still he's got his... Um, his grasp is unused at the moment. I mean, is that important? Uh, it is re very relevant, particularly for things like Oakenold if you build up embodiments of Earth. Now the Command and Cock is coming down here for, for six. Okay, so this looks to be defending for four. <coughs> I think Tom may be happy enough just sort of getting through a couple of points of damage here. Still keeping a skull cap on. So uh, this, is, this is beautiful. Another thing to note as well, the skull cap, uh, you know, having that additional defend for one on that is actually very, very good for things like the Winter's Whale. Um, so it allows Tom to just use one card to defend against it if he wants to here. Yeah. Uh, good point that one somebody mentioned in the set fact is how fatigued do you think both these players are just well, mentally at this point? Because, you know, this, this is not a quick match. Uh, this, you know, this has been a grind. Um, who of these two players do you think is going to be coping with this best? Uh, I feel, I'm not sure, these are both very, two very, very highly skilled players. I feel, in my mind, the pressure is put a little bit more on the Briar player, at least in this point in the game, because the impetus is on you to actually take the initiative, sort of carpe diem, seize the day, push the damage through. Yeah. So the Olden player, Matt, has done an incredible job of playing a very strong defensive game here. He knows that, look, uh, there's only, there's not that many power cards left. You know, there's a channel amount of rocks which I'm going to have to deal with, but if I can keep things pretty even for just a few more turns, I might be able to start pulling ahead here. Yeah. But again, whoever wins this match still has another final. Um, the other semi-final is done, so who, uh, the winner, Nick holding of that, is probably, you know, is taking some time to decompress after his match. Um, and, you know, that's, that's a big thing, getting your, getting your game face on after a match. Yeah, big congratulations to Nick Holding. Um, a bit of trivia for our local and international viewers is uh, Rohan Khanna and Tom Penny are both sort of uh, testing partners. So it seems they, you know, they'll be pretty happy that they've managed to both make it through to the top four. So here we see, I think Tom needs to make something happen right now. So he's chosen to defend with four with the Bloodshe Skeleton, the Skull Cap, and the Grasp. Those are the big blocks gone. So if he hits hit by something like Spinal Crush, Oakenol with Dominate, um, that it's going to be full shields down. So. So, well, uh, so you, you think basically Tom, Tom is doing this because he believes he can string it together now? I think so. I think he thinks he can put enough pressure on this turn to make that, that worth it. The other alternative is if he has a handful of red cards and the, you know, the frostbite there was just going to sort of devastate him, yeah. um, then he may have just thought, I need to do, uh, I can't just bleed out slowly, I need to make something happen. Okay. Tom checking his library. And the Snapdragon, the scales are still there. The Snapdragon's alive, and I think that um, that's probably one of the biggest cards Matt's concerned about. Um, obviously, things like Plunder Run and Channel Mount Heroic are massive. So we see a Plunder Run from hand, the first Plunder Run of the game, I believe. Tom would have loved to see a number of those in Arsenal, but uh, we'll just have to live with this one. Okay, so we'll see what he looks at getting back here. So it may be, you know, he may be looking at it, a Channel Mount Heroic and maybe even meets something like the Ball Lightning that Matt's pulled out there. Maybe a few ma mind <laughs> games trying to suggest, hey, I know what you're getting back. 
power of suggestion. Okay, so you see the channel mount heroic go and ball lightning go back on top of the deck. Now the one interesting thing is Tom's timing here because if he can force out box from Matt here, then allows him to set up the channel mount heroic for next turn. But if he, if Matt is able to take a lot of damage and come back with a big attack in that window, then that channel mount heroic might get a little bit stuck there. Yep. So if Matt, uh, you know, what, what is how many cards does Matt need to throw away this turn? How, what, how many cards does Matt want to keep to put the pressure on next turn? It really depends what's in his hand in Arsenal, because unfortunately we don't have access to that. You know, if he has something like a Spinal Crush. Um, or, you know, an Oakenold with Fuse, he probably wants to keep between his hand and Arsenal about three cards. So two cards to pitch, one card to play a big power card. Um, the other opportunity is, you know, he can come in with something like the Winter's Whale just to slow things down a little bit. Okay, so I think the players are just kind of making sure everything's above board. We may have a brief judge call, but we'll be right back into the action. I think, yeah, I feel both players here, uh, I think are pretty well aware that this is kind of the turning point in the game these next few turns. Because if Tom's able to strip a number of cards here and set up that big board presence next turn, so we can see the uh, channel mount heroic into something like ball lightning with go again, that might be something that might be just enough to put him back in the driver's seat. But if he's not and Matt can sort of slow that down, well, it uh, could be all over. I'm keen to, you know, I'd uh, like to see one of his big uh, 25 uh, damage turns um, from the from the Briar deck. Maybe I'm, I'm unpopular and wanted to see that, but it would be cool. Yeah, I believe, Tom, it's been a little bit stop and start for the Briar this game. Um, now, some of that is, of course, because of the way Matt has navigated this game. He's played it very well defensively, making excellent use of the Ice React ability on Oldham. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so Tom has seen some hands which just didn't didn't pan out, and the, the lack of plunder runs um, right up until now, I mean, certainly, in, any but you know, plunder run is certainly important for his big turn, so, Absolutely. so Tom, Tom has been fighting his deck a little bit in that uh, respect. I think that is fair to say, that um, not being able to get those big plunder run turns off from Arsenal, which are really the turns that you can really push through the damage is big. Um, I do wonder as well, the fact that two of those lightning presses are gone makes it a little bit harder. Like he wanted to get off the early lead, but it makes it a little bit harder in this mid to late game point where sort of pushing through on hit tr triggers can be quite critical. All right, still some discussion going on here. Yeah, so I think we're just checking what, yeah, so the judges will resolve this for us. Um, I think we're just perhaps checking something like a priority window to see if, uh, Okay, so I'm not, we'll let the judges sort this out. We can't yeah. speculate because we don't no, have the audio. We, um, we cannot speculate at all. I, my only thing is I do wonder if it's something to do with the embodiment of lightning timing, but that's just pure guesswork for me. We will, we will let the players and the judges work it out. Obviously a critical moment in the game here for both players. Thanks Ziva B for bringing up for the chat the, the details of that card of the old candle hole. Okay, yeah, so we, like we say, we don't really have information just yet, but it looks like yeah, it's a judge ruling and the players are just taking a quick bathroom break to work out. Uh, I do just want to encourage Twitch, uh, Twitch chat, uh, please avoid this speculation just for now. Uh, we don't actually have an official confirmation on what the judge call was, what the situation was. Um, so we will see if we can get that for you shortly. Uh, but for now, I just encourage players to, you know, put down the pitchforks for a moment and we'll, we'll see what's going on here. Yeah. Let's hope for a speedy resolution on this. Uh, because again, we've been enjoying this match. Um, I really want to see Yes, speculation is all you have, and that you'll just have to wait on a second. Uh, 
Okay, well, I mean, just while we're waiting, we've got a short break in the action. Um, just want to remind everyone of all the OP programs we have going up. I know you're much more excited, you want to see this game, but just a reminder to go to your field. Welcome to Welcome to Race Drafts coming up. We've got our, um, we've got, you know, Pro Quest coming up soon, we've Battle Hardened so Series. so much coming up. I mean, there is an event for everybody, and we want everybody to give her in the flesh and blood. Um, you know, uh, I think as Ian was saying, you know, get down to your local game store. Um, I mean, we take real pride in our armory kits and the Icelander kit uh, coming up is absolutely amazing. But like, you know, SG, SCG Con, ProQuest. All right, it looks like we, I'll, I'll end it. It looks like we're back into some action. Yep, and it looks like this has been resolved. So yeah, it looks like everything's worked out just fine. And we're seeing a lightning surge come down for four, uh, four here. So Plunder Run was played from hand, so it does not have the plus three bonus on it, but it does have that on her trigger. Okay, so it looks like now that break point for four is it just seems a lot less relevant against this uh, this Oldham deck that has access to, you know, the Earth React that has access to Crown of Seeds, Rampant of the Ram's Head. Oh no, the Pulse of Ice and Loft. That's devastating for Tom. So that's the two damage prevention shield plus a card on top of the deck because it's both Earth and Ice. It activates both of those. Wow. So Tom's turn not coming out, but it, this isn't his Mount Heroic turn. So, no, that, I mean, that's correct, that's correct. So, I mean, Tom may, may be thinking, look, I've done my job, I've stripped the cards that I need to strip from hand, and hopefully I can get stuff down next turn. Yeah. So, he, this is almost like a venturing, he's venturing out to, uh, yeah, he's, he's trying, persuading Matt to, persuading him gently to part with some cards. Yep, and it looks like he's coming down with another lightning surge. So we see the crown of seats activated to draw a card and put up a... So that's a three prevention shield, I believe, between the hero ability and the crown of seeds. Oh, and he's... Oh, and it's gone. So that's a very powerful sequence for Max. I believe he's now ended up with two cards in hand. Not quite the three, you know, you mentioned three is what he'd be looking for, but okay, it's still, still far back with... And it looks like we've had a quick clarification. It was just uh, wanting to know the order that the cards went on top. So it was, you know, nothing too crazy, just wanting access to the public information, which seems totally fine to me. Yeah. All right, so just the Winter Whale coming in uh, right now. So no Frostbite on this Winter's Whale, and I think Tom, I think Tom knows the time is now. Okay. Like, uh, now for Matt, he does again that three counters on Tunic. It's been critical the entire game. Here we go. You, you can see also just look at the speed in which um, uh, Tom shoved those down. Like Tom, this, this, Tom has this ready in his head, this, this whole plan. Now I think Matt does have the ice card in hand for the react if he needs it. Okay, Matt considering two cards. Okay, so just a rules clarification, I did have that incorrect. So for the pulse, uh, the the other player does not get to know the order, it's just two cards on top. So my apologies for the incorrect information there. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, well there's the React. Yep, and again, the Ice React is just so, so powerful in this. Um, that Channel Mount Heroic turn. The one thing for Tom here is he has established it onto the board. But that's the thing here, like Matt is just slowly chipping away here. So the Winter's Whale coming in and Ice Card has been pitched to it, so it is a potential Frostbite. Uh, Tom does have access to that grasp of the Arknight plus one card to defend, but again, when you're playing with three cards as Briar ag against just, those Ice Reacts, yeah, does that just reduce? It just it's has Matt just managed to eke it out? I mean, also Matt fifteen feels a little bit comfortable at this point. That's a lot of life to get through. Um, now we can see those Snapdragon Scalers are still active, but again, you really need a good opportunity to use those. All right. So what does Tom do here? Is Tom taking because uh, it's a I mean, Tom take? honestly, I mean, Tom is able to take this. Um, it's not, there's no, it does not appear to be any resources up for Pummel if Matt indeed has left that in the list, which I'm I'm sure about, or I think I saw him around Pummel earlier. Yeah. But one thing is, uh, if Tom has a blue card, he might be thinking, I can afford to take four, go down to two, and have my last shot at winning. Yeah. Um, but again, if he does that, that's actually 
his last turn, basically. His last turn of flexibility, and then he's trapped a little bit. Yeah, then he's on the, the kind of a downward spiral. All right, so yes. Tom's decision here is going to determine, possibly determine this game. I believe it's probably pretty fair to say that. And yeah. like the viewers point out, uh, a little bit unfortunate for Tom not being able to get off one, some of those early mid-game plunder runs from Arsenal. But I, like I say, I think we have to give full credit to Matt for just yeah. playing this game absolutely perfectly I, all I the way through. I don't disagree at all. It's been hard for Tom to string it together. Um, I think you know some of the, you know Matt's only taken damage when he's absolutely re had to do it. Yeah. And you know um, also you know um, Matt has been able to you know pick away at Tom. At various times, you know, make it the Tom, you know, just wanted to take that damage. Okay, so he has chosen to defend with the Grass of the Arc Knight here and get one Frostbite. Uh, interesting decision to block with the Grass Spear. I think maybe he just wanted to keep his life total as high as possible. I, I, from the looks, looks of things, Tom has enough blue cards in hand. Okay. Oh, isn't this? So a second channel mount heroic. But okay. I wonder I wonder here, because Tom, it looks like he has the ball lightning in hand. He will be able to follow up with Rosetta. But it's just not enough damage, I don't think. Not, not enough to do a 15. Because, I mean, if Matt has if Matt has a Glacial Footsteps used in hand, it's something like an Oakenold, he is able to take, I mean, you know, he can use the, the, the Tunic, the Rampant of Ram's Head. He can effectively take all the damage here and come back. So we will have a look. And it looks like those two Channel Mount Heroics, unfortunately, did stick together despite the shuffles. Friends, friends forever, apparently. Yeah. Oh, no, to be fair, one was brought back with Pulse. So, actually, no, that's a good point. Okay, so Matt just choosing to... No, a nice staunch. Staunch response. So that's defending for 7 plus 1. That's 8 currently. And Earth React brings it up to 9, 10. And, and then the Rosetta it. Thorn's coming through. Oh, yep, yeah. and... Uh, I guess it looks like he had the Earth Shield still up from that. Yeah. And I think Matt is well aware that he's got this game sort of very well under control at the moment. He doesn't need to do anything crazy, he just needs to stick to his game plan here. Any mistakes that Matt could make at this point, or do we, do we feel... It would have to be a giant blunder, uh, to, to be honest. And I, you know, if I can say, it, I don't think Matt's the type of player to make maybe, that kind of mistake. Maybe some kind of earthquake in the Wellington region, causing us to evacuate the, the building. Possibly. And maybe. Maybe I met uh, Tom's only out here. And of course, it's now just a one uh, heroic, Mount Heroic uh, field there. And here comes the hammer. And now Tom is going to be forced to play with three card hands. Effectively for the rest of the game, unless he can strip cards from Matt here. I think, I mean, I'm trying to think of what he can get, what can get him out of this. Um, some sort of, if he has an Enlightened Strike less, some, some sort of Enlightened Strike Snapdragon Scaleless turn to at least push some amount of damage through. Um, but the, the problem with this, relying on that against these Alden decks, is they're just so consistent. Um, yeah. You know, the, uh, the old man is inevitable at the moment. Yeah. And I think also you pointed out, you know, already pointed out a couple of times, is, you know, those Lightning Presses, for example, that could, you know, Help push over those down, those lightning presses are gone. Uh, well, two of them were gone early in the game. Yeah, now I do think Tom might regret defending with that grasp of the Arc Knight because it was just defending vanilla damage. Um, you know, it didn't actually prevent anything uh, relevant last turn. And now he's in a spot where he can't, if he wanted to, defend with one card plus the grass to turn off the frostbite. Yeah. Here he's defending with one card and still getting a frostbite. So he should have taken the extra damage and you know, saved it for a frostbite turn. I think so, although, like I said, I don't like to second guess the players that Tom may have had a, a particular plan in mind there. And then we're seeing, you know, the plunder runs are in his hand, but it might just be, uh, you know, a little too late. And here we go. Frostbite token on Tom's board. And I think the writing is starting to be on the wall for this game. And again, now he's on one life. One measly life. I think that the problem for Tom is here is I can't see a path to him pushing anywhere near to sort of the 20 damage he needs with these three card hands. Yeah, because of course it's, you know, uh, you know I, I can't do the math here, but it's, you know, it's very simply, it's not 14 life, it's 
14 plus what Matt can actually plus a lot here. Yeah. yeah, and Matt, we've seen Matt be able to assemble a lot of um, extra protection here, even this late in the game. And the thing is here, Matt can choose to just throw away three cards if he wanted to, even without using all his interactions. He could throw away three cards, defend for nine, come back in with a hammer, and that's ripping two cards from Tom's hand. Yeah. And at that point, the game is just completely over. Yeah. Oh, I see another, st I believe I see a staunch response in Matt's hand as well. Yep, so I don't want to write the game off until it's still going, you know. Who knows? We, we have seen, we saw the game yesterday with uh, Rohan Carter on the Viserai versus, uh, versus here in the prison where you know, uh, Rohan managed to pull the rabbit out of the hat there and, and take that one out, but I think this one uh, looks... As you mentioned, Tom managed to pull out the game against uh, against Kale in the quarterfinals. That's true. So we see the Entwine Lightning coming in for seven here, uh, but it might be a little bit of a tall order. We will see. All right. Well, people, just, you know, give, give, give good thoughts to whichever player you want to take this match. Send, send them your, your love psychically. The one thing I've seen in Matt's hand here is I think... Okay, so you... Is just going to play it safe. And to be honest, I totally agree with this play. There's no point risking anything silly when you know you can just slowly grind out the player here. You've kind of got the Frost Hammer lock going down. He still has access to things like the Staunch response. Uh, he's got a Terra Sunder in hand. So one, one option is here. Matt is probably just making sure he ticks all the boxes correctly. Yeah. But I think what we might see here is potentially a Terra Sunder Hammer to just close out the game. That would be... That would be... Uh... Alright, just that lonely plunder, hum, plunder run in Tom's hand. And, okay, so we might see the Snapdragon Scalers. Yep, might as well use well, it now. Now or never. <laughs> yeah. It would be sad to see the, the game end and Tom still have it um, unpopped on his board. The, the issue with this play is the Snapdragon Scalers is like a critical tempo play in the early to mid game. Sometimes in late game, the life titles are close, yep. but at this point, like we say, it's uh, it's looking so difficult that it is nice to get to push an extra four damage on the Rosetta Thorn. But if Matt does have that Terra Sunder in hand, two blues, like I suspect, uh, I think he's very happy just to take four damage here and, and close it out. Okay, I'm choosing just to play it ultra safe here, and honestly, I can't blame him. Yeah. No point in throwing this away. Although it would have been cool to see that Terra Sunder come down. It would be nice. I'm always, uh, always one for these big finishes. Matt would need two blue cards in hand as well uh, to do that. Now again, their deck velocities. I can't tell the size of their decks. Um, oh, there's a lightning press. Okay, but here we're going to see it really start to bite. Uh, you know, and <laughs> really start the frostbite, <laughs> should I say. <laughs> because Tommy here is just forced into defending with two cards every turn. Yep, and you, don't you know it? The one, one funny thing is, Tom actually has a, a pretty good hand here. He can go plunder run into the entwine with lightning press activism's yeah. hand. The problem is Matt is like very well aware that even with lightning press, this is a maximum of 10 damage. So again, at any point where Matt feels comfortable, he can take the damage and come back in for lethal. So we see, for example, that enlightened strike um, available in his hand here. Yep. And Matt can easily do the enlightened strike with a go again. Oh, throwing out two cards. Choosing just to defend fully for seven, and, uh, and there we go. Oh. Just to add insult for injury. A bit of salt in the wound there. The, um... So honestly, I, I can see this from Matt's perspective, because whilst, you know, it might be tempting just to close out the game with, let's say, like an E-Strike into Frost Salmon to do it, I think he just wants to protect, I mean, I'm sure he knows probably his full pitch stack at this point, uh, but he probably figures, look, there's no way Tom can kill me with a two-card hand. Yeah. So if I just do this, I am guaranteed to win through fatigue at some point. And look at Tom's front of the cards that Tom's having to throw away. The channel mark horror comes down, but now Matt has what he's looking for, a four-card hand. I think this is going to do it. The Glacial Flip steps, bam, bam. Confused, and... And I think we're going to see the hand extended here. What? What? There we go. Good, Good game. Madness. And Matt Rogers proceeds to his back-to-back -back New Zealand National Championship final. Yep, I was going to say, certainly a harder path, but doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how many you lose on the day, as long as you get to that last one, and Matt's, Matt's there. And we have a, you know, after 
Poor Briar's out. What, do we feel sorry for Briar now? Uh, well, I think I think this is a good show of like how some of these defensive decks uh, can build themselves in such a way to counteract a few of the Briar decks. Yeah. So I think one thing we we can say, you know, sometimes there's a little bit of variance. I think Tom it may have been uh, probably a little bit frustrated he wasn't able to set up those big plunder run turns from Arsenal, maybe in conjunction with Mount Heroic. There were a few awkward turns early on, but you know we just saw the power of Matt's build. Matt is an extremely accomplished player, as everyone knows. He played just a defensive masterclass that game, and I think he really just, uh, when Tom stumbled a little bit, Matt just took full advantage. So he chipped damage where he needed to, and just kept his life total high, and bought himself maximum flexibility over yeah. the course of the game. But a, a deck that has high consistency, um, being played by a player that you know just doesn't make that really makes mistakes. I mean, that's a great combination. Absolutely, and uh, that's the thing about Oldham. Often the deck is so consistent that it's going to do what you've built it to do. Like most of the time, that's why the deck is so good. It's extremely it's powerful defensively. Matt can slide into this more aggressive strategy, which we may see next game. But I think. For us, we might take we might take a very short break uh, before we get back into the final. Let's see how the players are. From Matt probably needs a, a few minutes to to shake it off after that match. But I mean, he must be on a little bit of a high there. Yeah, I think yeah. he I think he that was a pretty convincing one, we must say. So don't go anywhere. We will be back very very shortly with the New Zealand National Championship final. Is Matt going to go back to back the two time be a two time New Zealand National Champion? Are we going to see Nick holding on the prism sort of? Use that illusionist light to take down the Oldham player. Crown, crown a new national champion. Um, yeah, there's a lot of drama to this finals, and I'm pretty glad that we're here to see it. Absolutely. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back very, very shortly with the final game. We're going to have the New Zealand national champion crowned very soon. We'll be right back. Can't wait.